Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Uncharted 3 Crushing Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the 10th level entitled Historical Events. We are now in a completely new environment that's nice, lush, bright and happy. And we're now reunited with Elena, who's from the other games as well, if you remember her. A nice and convoluted love story mixed in there. And we're doing a little bit of a, of a reconnaissance mission right now, because we're trying to figure out how to get where we need to be. And there's no real challenge to this level, it's just following and watching some of the exposition. Uh, I've kept it in purely because, you know, you are controlling. There's a section that comes up in the desert later on, which I've skipped a bunch of stuff where you, you can't go wrong. All you have to do is walk. There's no direction you're supposed to walk, you just walk. It's all preset, it's all supposed to work that way. Uh, I do believe there's a fight at the end of this level, though, or, or midway through. We'll soon find out, but just look at this. God, it looks so good. It's got real good lighting, it's got real good texture work, it's got everything about it. The details are fantastic. There's even people wearing, I think it's burkas, you know, the, the ninja gear that, that that some people wear like in certain religions. It's it's just madness. There's There's a lot of detail and it's real nice. And at the start of the level, you might have noticed some texture pop in. There's only two parts of the game that I've actually noticed that in, so I don't know what engine they're running, but it's a fucking good one, I'll say that much. But because this is just following her and her showing you where to go, I'm going to talk about a movie I watched last night. My God, was it awful. It was called Night of the Demons. And I know what you're thinking. The title should tell me everything I need to know about this pile of shit. But I watched it anyway. And I didn't watch it, you know, sit down and watch it. I was editing this. <laughs> so I was editing my guide and it was in the background I kept flicking up and looking at it and seeing what was going on and the reason I kept it on is because it had Edward Furlong in it and if you don't know who Edward Furlong is he's John Connor, he's the real John Connor he played the little kid in Terminator 2 and he also played you know, the, the racist kid in American History X and the guy's a good actor the only problem is he likes cocaine and other you know, non-prescribed drugs a little bit too much for his own good so his... His career went in the toilet, even though he's still making steady work, he's just generally in B-movies and garbage and, and just not really doing very ambitious stuff. And not only that, he's put a ton of weight on, so he's grown up, not gracefully, because he looks a lot older than he is thanks to drugs and just, you know, party lifestyle, and he's also fat as shit. So he's in this film, clearly the only star and the only person worth watching in it, and he just, I can't stop looking at his neck. The entire way through, I'm staring at how fat his neck is. He's gone from being this skinny, good-looking kid to this just fat, crappy, you know, actor. He's, he's the equivalent of Seymour Hoffman's character in Along Came Polly, this dude who had this role when he was younger and then just milked it ever since and then never really did anything. And it's it's just so tragic. But the film is about these, these bunch of alternative goth style people that are all dressed up for Halloween and they go to this house to spend Halloween there they end up getting locked in it and they find it has a secret basement that's got a bunch of skeletons and they think it's all set up they think it's fake they don't know what it is and one of the girls puts her hand in to, to tries to steal the skeleton's gold tooth and the skeleton bites her hand yeah because this is making perfect sense isn't it but it bites her and it transfers its demon essence into her body and now she's a Oh, I'm just going to have to interrupt this little story to say that we're encountering a flash flood. My fucking God. There's the, wow! There's cars driving down the road in the window behind me, and there's just wings of water coming off the tyres. There's that much water on the fucking road. It looks like a sluice way. This is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I know it's only rain, and I'm easily amused, but... My God! Wow! It's, oh, just wow. But... I know what you're thinking about the film... Why would I put myself through this? And the main reason is there was lots of tits. There, there was, like, boobies everywhere. Full-on, just, top, bursting boobs. And they generally keep me amused for quite some time, so I stare. And uh, and there was Edward Furlong looking really fat. And I watched it, it wasn't great. And, th and then you look on IMDB, and this thing had a $10 million budget. How the fuck do you spend $10 million on a pile of shit? I just don't get it. What were they doing wiping their asses with 50s? It just makes no sense. But this is a pretty big fight, this. And the, the quickest way to take down enemies when you're in these fight sequences is to tap circle and throw them into a surface. Because when you throw them into a surface, uh, Nate will interact with it. He'll, like he grabbed that pot earlier on and he'll smack them with the pots and things. And it's the easiest way to kill the enemies the quickest. 
Uh, I don't really do that too much because I like the fighting and I just get in there and make it look all, you know, like fucking swashbuckling and what have you. But there's a heavy that turns up and this heavy's a pain in the ass. So just dodge his attacks, go in for the big punches, go in for the big swings and just take him out as best you can. And uh, just be careful of the guys around you because they will make this fight a little bit more awkward than it needs to be. And um, you don't have a gun this time to cheese him, so just do your best and, uh, you know, kick ass, kick some ass. Once you've done the fight, you've effectively beat the level and we'll be continuing on in Syria in the next one. But just punch him, punch him, punch him, watch out for his headbutts. Keep on just, you know, working away. I don't know if there is a quicker way of killing these guys at the fight and if there's a button you can press or a super move. I've not figured it out, but just, uh, just try your best. And try not to die, because these guys will kill you real quick. The the luxury here is the checkpoint is super close. And when he does that big, long, falling down punch, that means the fight is over. But it's not quite over, because a few more guys will drop down that you have to kick in. So, just do your best with these guys. I am a big fan of this fighting. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but there's just something about it. It's not quite Batman when it comes to the rhythm of it, but as far as, you know, melee-based combat in an action game goes, it's really, really interesting. It's a lot more, you know, fun than you would think it would, and even if you're watching this wondering it looks a bit standard and a bit repetitive, it's a lot of fun when you're doing it, which is good. And um, I rarely welcome, you know, fist fights in games, because they're generally a fucking mess, but this game pulls it off, and it's, it's another one of the, the credits to, to Naughty Dog. They've done some really fantastic things. But all you do now is you follow your buddies, you'll run through the marketplace, and I'll see you guys in the next video, so you take care now.